66 rolls along, they they envision this Scout 800, which is uh, to the to the untrained eye, virtually identical in appearance. Pretty much, they just updated some features and comfort features and badging and different things. It wasn't a whole lot different. Right, the dash right. upgraded, and uh, but they also did something v- really special. I think to compete with the Bronco in 66 or. I wonder who kind of chicken or the egg, but they came out with the V8. V8, yes. Which is a game changer. Right. Um, and also in 66, a four-speed. Right. And a four-speed in the four-cylinder edition. So now right. we have... And then, and then they had the twi- twin stick. Yes, 66, 67. And it's really fun, you guys. Like, one fun little... As uh, my son is 14, and we're here at the Nationals, and it's one of my favorite things to do is go like, okay, what year is this scout? And you just... It, like man, in yeah. sixty one and sixty two, they had clear marker light lenses. Right. Six in the heater boxes on the driver side. Sixty three, it changes amber lenses. Like you can decipher quite a bit of things sure. through little subtle cues, um, and that's a lot of fun. So sixty six rolls around. We now have this V eight Scout eight hundred with a Dana forty four rear, still a Dana twenty seven front. But now it's like it's getting refined. And what's interesting right. is like the marketing starts shifting. Right, they they come out with a sport top and yeah, which is like you know, a luxury. Tried to dress them up with different packages, like the red carpet special and yeah, well, that's cool. You know, that was things that's like cool that. Model. The uh, uh, champagne, yeah, colors and those are pretty upholstery. rare. Yeah, um, and what I noticed from looking just at like, I love looking at old ads like Scout ads because you see like now they're marketing to moms, right? But a lot business. of females in the ads, yeah, right. which is cool, and a lot of uh, business like business people, right. Um, it's kind of it's kind of pretty cool, um, and again, do you have any clue? Did production stay kind of stable, or did it go up or down? It was up and down. Up and down. Yeah. Um, but largely, probably consistent overall. Yeah, so we're it was talking, always consistent. We're talking a ten-year production, roughly. Let's just say conservatively, twenty-five thousand per year. That's about a good average. So is that two? Is my math right? Two hundred fifty thousand vehicles. It's a, there were 500 and some 500,000 total. So yeah, that's wow. about right. This is this both is two stuff. and yes, yes. Yeah. Scout eight, the first Okay, generation. So you said in 66, now something happens and how, how is it going at, at, at internationals? It, it's going well. They're doing okay. They've got the travel on their bigger trucks are doing well too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So and they had sh- a whole line. Yeah. And we're talking about the scouts cause that's what's most popular, but some of their literature said most complete line. Yeah. So they went from the scout clear to these. These uh, oil-filled behemoth trucks, huge. That is, that's actually something that, and Chevy had some bigger trucks and Ford, but but International had like from semis, like that's full right. out everything. Everything. Um, and what is the distinction? One is, so describe to us what is the light line? Light line would be Scout up to like a one ton, 1500. Okay. Like, pickup, okay. flatbed, dually. Which is cool. Um, and in the pickup trucks, little different piece but they stopped manufacturing the pickup trucks and the travel alls in what year 75 75 was the last and they about may may of 75 funny we know uh what's his name i know nick foster had it for a while and he sold it to what's the guy's name that has the last 1980 oh uh lynn faith i believe has the last uh truck truck but mike bolton has the mike last bolton, that's right yeah and it's cool i've seen the guy that Lynn got, I think, got the last truck from. His name is Nick. Um, I've seen it. Super cool. And yeah, the last scout. It's pretty neat. And I've heard Mike is restoring the last scout. He's doing a ground up on the last scout, yes. But, like, keeping it out. Like all Everything the respected. That's awesome. Um, so, 66, some things come around. The market, they're trying to keep up with the market and doing a good job. The 8800 was a great vehicle. One shift, like Scout 80s, the windshield folded down. Right. Kind of back to the probably the Jeep inspiration. Sure. Then 60, they quit that. Yeah, in 66, now the windshield is fixed. Although we've seen some. They That's snuck right. through. They snuck through. I, I've heard a story, because a friend of mine had a 69 Scout 800 with a fold-down windshield, and he said it was like a Forest Service, like some of the national parks and Forest Service special ordered those right. i don't know if that's true possibly some military too yeah military and yeah like you see scouts at airports at this yep. time yep um you ever see those big old travel alls with like the eight doors oh on yeah them? <laughs> dog <laughs> day afternoon was a movie that had one of those <laughs> okay um so 66 rolling around the engineers are like what's next so what are they what is that what are they working on well i was like i mentioned they the sport top and they came out with special models 
and uh, little improvements here and there. But they also, like you said earlier, they started designing the Scout too. Oh, that started in 65. 65, okay. Yeah, clay models, I've got pictures of those. There's Some of those are in the book. That's crazy. Uh, on the Scout 2, and uh, it took them until 71 to get it out. Yeah. And then I remember when the Scout 2 did come out, there were dealers that wanted them to keep both lines. Oh, All really? for the economy, Scout 800. Really? Because they were cheaper. Yeah. The Scout 2 was uh, technicali- you know, technically a better, not a better, but... A, right, a more expensive so, design. So, yeah, so, so, so it was a thousand dollars more. That's right, and we talk a lot about, uh, and in our business, we focus a lot on drivability. And when you talk right. about a Scout 800, only ever came with drum brakes. Right, no power steering. Never had power steering. Um, big vacuum old, light, uh, yeah, wipers. Vacuum wipers. Yeah. Um, just very, very simple. The Scout 2 revolutionized all that, yes. basically. They're quieter, yes. more comfortable. Like They have uh, wider leaf springs, longer right. leaf springs, so they ride better. It's much better design. Yeah. Um, they leak less. They leak. I mean, anything <laughs> with a right. removable top is right. going to leak. Of course. Um, but now, it's but even in 71, we have a couple, a couple things shifted. Actually, we should just mention in 1969, a new engine is offered. The six right. cylinder, 232 right. AMC six cylinder. It came standard. Yeah, so now we have the 196, the V8 304 at this time, right? Like 69, 70, and the 232. That's Correct. it, right? Right. And also we have the introduction of automatics. Right. In the what? Borg Warner. Was that in 69 or 70? I believe it's 69. Yeah. So now we have a really kind of cool vehicle in that we can have automatic and then we're comfortable. Never had AC, although they did have dealership options. There was an add-on unit. Yeah, like a yes. Mark IV. I've seen a few yep. of them. Um, so you're getting into some refinement. But then the Scout Two comes. AC is very easy, easy right. and common. Cruise control. It's an option. Yes. Uh, cruise control, power steering, uh, torque flight transmissions came in a little later. Better transmission yeah, yeah, yeah. than the Borg Warner. Was that by like 71, 72? Uh, 72? No, it would have been 73 and 4. Really? Yeah. The, 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 they got the rid Borg, of the Borg Warner. Yes. What do you and think about brakes. What do you think about the Borg Warner? It's not a very good transmission. Yeah. No. It's like a cast iron removable bell housing right. weird. Yeah, it's pretty electric kick yeah. down switch. And it does it does it's kind of a hard shift. Yeah. Versus right. the the uh, smoothness of the torque flight. Which smart for my age to partner oh, yeah. kind of with that Mopar design sure. of the tor- of the torque flight seven twenty seven, which they use behind Hemis and like it's a great transmission. Right. Oh it's great. Um, Still today. That's right. And so seventy one comes around, the Scout two is born. Do you know or have you ever heard of the last Scout 800? No. I Same here. What happened to that puppy? Or the first Scout mm. 2 either. We don't know much about them. Do you know? Tell, me, tell us a little bit about the 810. Well, that would have been the, the, pers- the uh, design, excuse me, the designation f- for the project for the Scout 2. Okay. So... so- so yeah, because there's some like there's some differences. Those very first, maybe the first six months of '71, like the glove box has a push button, right. the VIN plates in a different spot. Right. Those were eight, pretty much considered eight tens. Yeah, the shifter. Oh, like right. you ever seen those? The Borg Warner shifters are real funky right. for the Scout twos. Right. Um, and then they dropped. Them. And then they dropped the Scout. Them.